from all you moonshiners if you want to hear. Not Welcome back to Ball and Hops. I'm George. Today, uh, oh, first, please, if you would, subscribe, share us with your friends, and, of course, comment below. Uh, the comments are really what keep us going, and your subscriptions keep us alive. So for that community out there, we're all in this together, so keep us moving. All right. Hey, I've got a sweet potato back there starting to sprout. I was using that on a, uh, you know, I was testing sweet potatoes as a medium for a distillate. Uh, I'm working on it. Hey, um, I've got my box. Now, we're talking about the pulse wave modulator. Now, remember when we did this, uh, the other video, if you saw that, the pulse wave modulator, what that does, we're using that as a heat control source for our still, uh, our brewing container, um, our kiln, or any other kind of uh, device that you're using where you're gonna use heat and electricity. And so what I've got, what happens is, is a, and I've described this before, that sine wave, you know, they get 60 cycles a second, you know, 120 volts, 120 volts, 120 volts. Um, the duty cycle is between two time frames. And if we can control the period of time or that duty cycle, we can reduce that to, let's say, 25% of that duty cycle well then, even though all of that power is available, the average power that's seen by the circuit or the load um, is going to be equal to that. So your amperage reduces and your voltage reduces proportionately. And so then if you increase it to 50%, of course your amperage increases and your voltage increases and all the way up to 100% if you're using a full sine wave. And that's basically the theory of how this thing works. And so I've got the box. I showed you that before. Um, and again, it's a four by uh, four by six by eight or four by five by eight box. They run me like 18 bucks, 20 bucks. This is the uh, 4,000 watt uh, pulse wave modulator. It's got a fan on here. And you'll see on this that you've got AC voltage in these two and then your AC voltage out those two. So I go black, white, black, white. It really doesn't matter, but I always use the, that, that's my convention, black, white, black, white. And that's how that operates. Now, uh, included in that, I've also added the uh, digital meter. Uh, these run, oh, first of all, these are anywhere from, oh gosh, it all depends on where you get them at, Amazon, eBay, or some of those other places. It, it, it can run you anywhere from like 28 to 35 to 40 bucks. It, it all depends, and of course, what type you get, because I've got one here for 240 volts, and it's a 10,000 watt uh, pulse wave modulator. And the benefit of a pulse wave modulator is you'll notice that the heat sink is not that prominent. It doesn't require a large heat sink so the amount of heat produced by that control is a lot less. Uh, and it fits in a box real easy. And you put a fan on it, it really makes it nice and cool. All right. So I've got this digital uh, amp meter and volt meter. It, it measures both at the same time. And these run me anywhere from 8 to 12 uh, to 15 bucks. It, it all depends. It, it doesn't matter what size you get. As long as it's going to handle the amps and the voltage that you're going to be putting through it. Because they do come in different sizes. Uh, just make sure you get the one that goes like from 0 to 240 volts and from uh, at least from 0 to like 30 amps. I, I mean, it just gives you that, that range. You're going to be operating in that range anyway. And then the small donut that comes with it. And the donut, uh, if you're familiar with the amp clamp, and we've used this before, if you clamp this around one of the load wires, uh, it'll read right here, it'll read with the amperages going through that wire because as electricity flows through the wire with the amperage depending on the force it's going through there it creates a, a magnetic field and the intensity of that field is directly proportionate to the amperage and then there's a calculation that you can find out what the voltage is so and that's what an amp clamp does you can only clamp it around one wire though but if you clamp it around multiple wires you get nothing all right you get a false reading but so you got to clamp it around that one wire and so what this does is this acts just like an amp clamp but it goes inside a box and the wire, your load wire goes right through it. Just one single wire just, and it just lays right in there. It's just a donut that just sits on top of the wire. And then these two small connectors go on the back of your meter and it tells you exactly where to hook them up. It shows you. So 
I want to get a good close-up and show you what one of these already assembled looks like before we do the tutorial piece by piece on how to assemble one of these and utilize it. Wouldn't that be great? So give me a second, I'll get all set. Now this is the inside of the box. And you'll see here I've got the pulse wave modulator and I just mounted that in the bottom of the box right down there. And I've got AC power going in and then the AC power going out. See, I got black and white, black and white. And there's my ground connected together. So there's the ground for the cable. Now on this ground, this ground goes to this grounding lug on the receptacle. And then I've got one black wire that comes off of here. That's this one. And it goes through my donut and it goes to the brass side of my receptacle. And then my neutral wire comes off of here and it goes to the silver side of my neutral wire, of, of my uh, receptacle. Now what I've done here, you'll also see that I've removed the, the knob and I, I just opened it up and I removed the potentiometer and mounted that in the cover and left the connection to the pulse wave modulator. So PWM. That's going to be our term. Now this is my digital amp meter and voltage meter. And it does the same thing because this has two functions, but it does these two for those two functions at the same time. It'll, it'll measure voltage and amperage. Now you'll notice here that the, the two green from your donut, which is measuring the amperage, just goes onto these two lugs. And then your 120 volts, and I've got that running from the receptacle, to one and two, uh, these two here. And it doesn't matter which one it goes on, as long as you've got a hot and a neutral. And that'll tell you on the front side how many amps are running through this receptacle. Now, it, it would beg to, uh, let me wire this up one other way and show you, because if you had ran these two wires down here, then it would, it would tell you how many volts are provided to the PWM, the pulse wave modulator, not necessarily what's going through the receptacle. And you really don't need to know what's going through the receptacle because you're already measuring the amperage. And that's really what we're concerned with. We're concerned with controlling that power, that power in the amperage. And since the amperage and the voltage are proportionate, I can get rid of one or the other. You know, I'd rather just get rid of the voltage and it'll tell me exactly what's running to the pulse wave modulator. So that's what I would do is I would just take this wire and this wire, extend them, this white and this black. It doesn't matter which one of those two uh, that you hook them to. And that's how a pulse wave modulator works. It's very simple. You see, it's well, they're very straightforward and it's a, the simplicity of design and it works 100% of the time. Well, for all of you hobbyists out there, there's another method now uh, to control the heater element in your still, your kiln, or your brewing process, or whatever other process you have, because it's just like, it's exactly the same, only different, uh, about running your stove in the house if you've got an electric range. Um, so, until next time, of course, happy distilling, subscribe, share us with your friends, and comment. Love the discussions that are going on. Love them.
come all you moonshiners if you want to hear. Like the kind of bulls that's a around here. Made a way back in.